Hello everyone, hope you've been doing well. I hope you had a really good um, Easter time with your family and that everything's going good. So today, for social studies, this week, um, for social studies, I'm introducing us because like, I want to try to add Freckle um, into our curriculum. So because of that, they have a special section on the Declaration of Independence. We have a little section here in the book, so I thought I'd go over the section of the book first. Just give you a platform for it. And then, of course, you can complete the freckle on that throughout the week. Um, I have it set up for all three days, so you could do take your time with it. Um, but at the same time, remember to still, even though I put some notes up here, to take some notes. Um, do your vocab cards for this section. Um, you have to do some vocab cards for this section. It looks like it's on... Independence, Declaration, Rights, and Treason. So only four. Not that bad. Now, the Declaration of Independence. We have to also remember how we got here. In the previous chapter, we see how the country's been getting ready to fight Britain, and then they finally do start the battles in Lexington and Concord. We see how the British win overall those early battles, but the Patriots because uh, they're no longer colonists at this time, they're declaring themselves patriots at this time, we see that they are scrappy. They're able to fight. They take out a decent amount of troops right away. This shows the British that, the British, that holy cow, these guys can fight. We've got to get more ready. And that shows the patriots here that, okay, we can't fight, but we're still not in the best shape for this. And that's what leads us to these independence. Um, steps toward the Declaration of Independence. We see that they're starting to be like, ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, mucus. Patriots here are thinking, we need our independence. We need it. We need to rule ourselves. Where there are loyalists who are like, no, 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 no. We are still under King George III. If we just do what we're supposed to do, we won't get in trouble. We wouldn't have to worry about these taxes. This whole thing would have been a problem. So we see that there's division among that. So whenever there's division... There's always going to be people trying to convince you the other way. A great example is our political system right now. You will have, for example, with the whole coronavirus, there's Republicans who are going to use this pandemic to their side, and there are Democrats who are going to use this pandemic to their side. It's how it works that people are going to try to get their way with certain things. So we see here, Thomas Paine's the first one. Well, not the first one, but he does, he finds a really good method of pushing for independence. He gets a, uh, a cheap pamphlet, and he writes down reasons of how Britain's been unfair, about how they force them for, with taxes, and how they're basically this big, overpowerful, mean thing, and we need our independence from it. And this is great because with not much money, it's cheap, it's able to get around easy because it's a little pamphlet. People are able to read it, it's easy to understand, it's easy for them to be like, Oh, okay, I can go for this independence idea. That's not a bad idea. So then we also see how this eventually gets into Congress. So remember, they already had two meetings with Congress, and now they're meeting more now. And they decided, okay, independence is necessary. We're, all, we, we're mostly agreed on that. Independence is necessary. But could we actually beat Britain? They are already strong. They're getting stronger because they saw we can fight. Are we actually able to take them on? This is the proper question. It'd be one of those things, like, for me, it's like, okay, you know what? I think I could see myself, you know, becoming, you know, like, Mr. Allison's the eighth grade teacher. I could see that. That's possible. But am I really strong enough to beat him? You know, he has all this experience. Can I out-knowledge him? You know, it's things like that. They want it. They know it's time. But can they actually do it? And for the record, I'm not after Mr. Allison's job. Mr. Allison's doing an amazing job. You guys would be very blessed to have him next year if or when you come back. Well, if you come back next year for the school year to St. Charles. And if you are coming back, so when? All right. You get to the Declaration of Independence then. Thomas Jefferson is the main writer, but there are four other writers there. And he basically writes down how they declare that they have certain rights. Um, they are, those rights are like to live free, right to be free, or seek happiness. The full on quote, quote, which is quoted a lot by um, historians and you know political people. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, 
that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So you see that they're going off this idea that we have rights. This is why we're declaring independence. We have this right to not be forced to pay taxes. We have rights to seek happiness. We don't have a right to be oppressed, but to seek happiness. And we see that the Declaration is separated into five different parts. The first part is why they want to leave Britain, mostly because of the unfairness and because, you know, taxes is not fun. Then we see um, the second one is people's rights, where he goes into depth about the rights that every single citizen should have. And then, of course, this is the biggest section, and it makes sense, because every human being is good at this, complaints. We are good with complaining, and we see the Declaration is no exception. It is the biggest section of the Declaration of Independence, complaints against Britain. And then we see a section there for independence where they finally make that final statement that we declare our independence, and then the signatures. And of course, I'm sure some of you have heard by this point, John Hancock has the biggest signature. The reason the other ones are tinier is because this is treason. This is treason what they're doing, because they're still under British rule. So this is officially going against Britain, they are being treasonous. This would be like, you, you'll actually see this when you discuss the Civil War later on. But it's like when, you know, the Confederate States went against the United States. It is treason. So a lot of them are like, okay, if I write small, it shows I supported this, but, eh, you know, you can't hurt me. John Hancock's like, I agree to this. I'm doing this. So wrote a nice, giant signature. And then, um, just so you all can see for perspective as well, I mean, you'll see this in your books. Fat here. Hang on. Sorry about that. It's sort of dark in here. Let's get the lights on. Maybe that'll help. Uh, yeah, it helps. So you can see section one's only that little bit. Section two goes there. That's a decent size. Look how big section three is. All the complaints they have against Britain. Part four is... um, yeah, par Parkour. No, I'm just messing. They do sound similar, though. Part four, you see, is uh, just a little bit, which is declaring their independence. And then, of course, part five is the actual full-on signature. Well, signatures. All right, and now we see the importance of the Declaration. It's the first Americans, because they're technically not Americans yet, they declare their independence. So it's one of those things, do you consider them, do you consider them the first Americans because they declared independence that day? Or will you consider the first Americans the ones who actually succeed with this and get away from Britain? Then, uh, but regardless, it's the first Americans to choose to rule for themselves. And then, later on, you'll see this gives us the motivation we need to get equality for everyone. Because well, you have to remember, when this was made, they were just thinking about just the men at this point. White men who own property. Then it became white men in general. Then, of course, you know, we got to every race, um, every, um, women as well. So you see that we do, that because that they say this is supposed to be made equal, we all have equal rights, this would be used for that. So good luck with your assignment on Freckle. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you all have a great day. Have fun. Parkour.